Do you want to know which microphone to buy? Then you're in the right place. Hello, I'm Jason Sanderson from podcasttech.com where we take the hard work out of your podcasting. And in today's video, we're going to find you the perfect microphone. And I've got a fair few of them kicking around. <laughs> when I say a fair few, I mean a lot. I'm going to shoot out between 40 microphones today, some of which are regulars that find their way into nearly every podcast studio. Some are some quirky ones you've probably never heard of or thought about. Some are some vintage classics from yesteryear that I can't seem to let go of. Uh, some are some brand new off-the-shelf pieces of crap that mark themselves as being your brand new podcast saviour. Which one's the best? Let's find out. <laughs> We've got a Bayer Dynamic TGX50, an Earthworks Ethos, an Electra Voice RE20, Heil PR40, a Neumann BCM705, a Rode Procaster, an SC Dynacaster, a Sennheiser Blackfire 509, a Sennheiser Blackfire 521, which is essentially an MD4 to 1 without the filter section, a Sennheiser MD441, a Shure SM7B, a Shure SM58, which is what you see in all my videos, a Shure MV7, and a Telefunken M82. All the mics today were recorded at a distance of around 10 centimeters. That's about four inch for you Yanks. Into a Universal Audio Apollo via a Cloud Lifter, which is a phantom powered mic booster. With the exception of the Earthworks Ethos, which has its own Phantom Power mic booster built into it. Also, the SC Electronics Dynacaster has a mic booster built in too, but this one's optional. So in the interest of removing all variabilities, I left this one turned off and just used the cloud lifter. Everything else goes through a cloud lifter. All the microphones are recorded flat. As you can see on some microphones, they have an optional iPass filter to remove the bottom end. Um, I chose to record all the microphones flat to, again, to remove any kind of variables from the equation. It's also worth noting all clips were level matched in post to around 25 dB LUFS. Obviously, louder always sounds better, and I wanted to avoid that, so they're all as close as I could get level matched to each other. But apart from that, they're all untreated. There's a link in the description so you can go download the files, or you can skip to the timestamps and jump between the microphones. Um, I really recommend that you test them against each other to find the ones that you think sound the best for you. And also, since nearly every mic review video on YouTube is completely misogynistic and only demoing male voices, I thought I'd bring my lovely wife, Edith, in to do the shootout with me. So, if you have a female voice and you want to buy a microphone, this might be the perfect video for you too. So first up, we've got the Bayer Dynamic TGX50. Looks a little weird. Like I said, we've got some quirky ones in here that you might have not seen coming, and I guess this is one of them since it looks like an Elvis mic. Uh -huh. Essentially, an instrument mic made for bass instruments, so it's got this proximity effect that the closer that you get to the microphone, it sounds fatter. Then it might take the edge off a thin, raspy female voice that's thinned out a little bit too much. It could make it sound a little bit smoother. So, I mean, let's just check it out, see what it sounds like. You are listening to a Bayer Dynamic TGX50 with the gain set at 20 decibels. This is a reference recording to evaluate which microphone you should buy for a podcast recording, including a p p plosives and a s-s sibilance test. You're listening to a Bayer Dynamic TGX50 with a gain set at 15 decibels. This is a reference recording to evaluate which microphone you should buy for podcast recording, including a p p p plosive test and a s-s sibilance test. My verdict, uh, maybe it's a little too scooped out. It does have that proximity boost, which could be a good thing, but it's got a lot of resonant eye mids as well, so it still sounds harsh anyway. And those plosives are so exaggerated that it almost seems unusable. Next up, we've got the Earthworks Ethos. This is brand new to the market. I'm not seeing many reviews so far about this microphone, maybe because it's so damn expensive. I mean, unboxing this was akin to opening an Apple product. It was so fancy and plush. It's a really, really beautiful mic in every way. Look at the engineering. It's fantastic. You are listening to a Earthworks Ethos with the gain set at 30 decibels. This is a reference recording to evaluate which microphone you should buy for podcast recording, including a PP plosives and the SS sibilance test. You're listening to an Earthworks Ethos with the gain level set at 25 decibels. This is a reference recording to evaluate which microphone you should buy for podcast recording, including a PP plosive and SS sibilance test. My verdict, it is a very beautiful mic. It's got a very rich low end, maybe a little too dark for my taste. There's not much clarity up there in the top end, but it could be amazing at smoothing out a thin, harsh sounding voice. I'll leave it up to you to decide whether you like this one or not, but I, I quite like it. Next, we've got the Electrovoice RE20. Ah, the good old broadcast standard. 
Honestly, you can't fix what isn't broken. I don't really need to say much about this microphone. It's awesome. You are listening to an Electro Voice RE20 with the gain set at 30 decibels. This is a reference recording to evaluate which microphone you should buy for podcast recording, including a PP plosives and a SS sibilance test. You are listening to an Electro Voice RE20 with a gain set at 25 decibels. This is a reference recording to evaluate which microphone you should buy for podcast recording, including a PP plosive test and a SS sibilance test. My verdict? Ooh, daddy. <laughs> Next up, a high OPR 40. I've had some experiences with IO microphones before, but they've been in recording studios on instruments. But they're fairly high quality dynamic at a fairly attractive price, so I figured it's worth adding into the shootout. Let's check it out. You are listening to a high PR 40 with the gain set at 24 decibels. This is a reference recording to evaluate which microphone you should buy for podcast recording, including a PP plosives and a SS sibilance test. You are listening to an IOPR 40 with a gain set at 20 decibels. This is a reference recording to evaluate which microphone you should buy for podcast recording, including a PP plosives test and a SS sibilance test. <laughs> Next up, the Neumann BCM705, the OG of high quality microphone companies, put their B's and E's condenser into a dynamic mic for broadcast. Uh, I've been waiting to hear these for nearly like two decades. I've been so excited to check them out finally. You are listening to a Neumann BCM705 with the gain set at 30 decibels. This is a reference recording to evaluate which microphone you should buy for podcast recording, including a PP plosives and a SS sibilance test. You're listening to a Neumann BCM705 with the gain set to 25 decibels. This is a reference recording to evaluate which microphone you should buy for podcast recording, including a plosive test and a sibilance test. My verdict, very nice mic, really controlled in the low end, maybe a little too bright for most people because of that, but it could work well if you've got a voice that's really deep and low and you need to add a little bit more brightness back into the mix. Next up, we've got a Rode Procaster. You are listening to a Rode Procaster with the gain set at 30 decibels. This is a reference recording to evaluate which microphone you should buy for podcast recording, including a PP plosives and a SS sibilance test. You're listening to a Rode Procaster with the gain level set at 20 decibels. This is a reference recording to evaluate which microphone you should buy for podcast recording, including a PP plosives test and a SS sibilance test. My verdict <sighs> sounds pretty cheap and grainy. Ah, uh, maybe I've got a bone to pick with Rode. Next up, we've got an SC Dynacaster. This is a new one to the market. Thanks to Andre at Audio Pro in Prague for hooking me up with this bad boy. You are listening to a Dynacaster with a gain set at 30 decibels. This is a reference recording to evaluate which microphone you should buy for podcast recording, including a PP plosives and a SS sibilance test. You are listening to a Dynacaster with a gain set at 25 decibels. This is a reference recording for you to evaluate which microphone to buy for your podcast recording including a PP plosives test and a sibilance test. It's quite nice, isn't it? Especially for the, the price range. Next up, we've got a Sennheiser Blackfire 509. Now, I know you don't see this in anybody's podcast list, but I literally put it in because if it's good enough for David Gilmore, then it's good enough for you. Plus, it's one of my favorite mics ever, so I couldn't not check it out against the others. You are listening to a Sennheiser Blackfire 509 with the gain set at 30 decibels. This is a reference recording to evaluate which microphone you should buy for podcast recording, including a PP plosives and a SS sibilance test. You're listening to a Sennheiser Blackfire 509 with the gain set at 25 decibels. This is a reference recording to evaluate which microphone you should buy for podcast recording, including a PP plosives test and a SS sibilance test. My verdict? Shine on you, crazy diamond. Shine on you, crazy diamond. Next up, we've got a Sennheiser Blackfire 521. It's essentially an MD421 without the iPass filter section. You are listening to a Sennheiser Blackfire 521 with the gain set at 30 decibels. This is a reference recording to evaluate which microphone you should buy for podcast recording, including a PP plosives and a SS sibilance test. You're listening to a Sennheiser Blackfire 521 with the gain level set at 20 decibels. This is a reference recording to evaluate which microphone you should buy for podcast recording, including a P P plosives test and a S S S sibilance test. Probably wouldn't be my first choice, but pretty good. Next up, we've got an MD441, another one of my absolute favorite microphones ever. The only problem with this is it's really hyper directional, meaning 
that if you've not got it pointing at exactly the thing that you want to pick up, there's a good chance you're probably not going to pick it up at all. It's so directional to what it is that you're pointing it at. You are listening to a Sennheiser MD441 with the gain set at 30 decibels. This is a reference recording to evaluate which microphone you should buy for podcast recording, including a pop plosives and the SSA sibilance test. You're listening to a Sennheiser MD441 with a gain set at 28 decibels. This is a reference recording to evaluate which microphone you should buy for podcast recording, including a pop plosive and sibilance test. Our verdict? It's much more warmer and darker than I remember it being. Maybe it's just because the capsule's so old and it's taken a beating. Maybe it's probably showing its age. You are gold, gold, always believe in your soul. Next up, we've got the Shure SM7B, another classic mainstay to the podcast world. The Rogan mic needs little introduction. You are listening to a Shure SM7B with the gain set at 30 decibels. This is a reference recording to evaluate which microphone you should buy for podcast recording, including a pop plosives and a SSA sibilance test. You are listening to a Shure SM7B with a gain set at 25 decibels. This is a reference recording to evaluate which microphone you should buy for podcast recording, including a pop plosives test and a sibilance test. You can hear why it's the most popular podcast, mic. Come on. <laughs> Next up, we've got the Shure SM58 pulled from any musician's gig bag or a dusty shelf. I mean, I've had this one kicking around for years and it'll probably last me another few decades because they're indestructible. You can drop them from a building and they'll still work. You are listening to a Shure SM58 with the gain set at 30 decibels. This is a reference recording to evaluate which microphone you should buy for podcast recording, including a pop plosives and a SSA sibilance test. You're listening to a Shure SM58 with the gain set at 20 decibels. This is a reference recording to evaluate which microphone you should buy for podcast recording, including a p p plosives and a s s s sibilance test. My verdict, the cheap and cheerful, just like me. That's why you'll see me using them in all my videos. Next up, we've got a Shure MV7. It's Shure's new USB mic that's kind of been labelled as a poor man's SM7. Or is it something else entirely? Let's find out. You are listening to a Shure MV7 with the gain set at 28 decibels. This is a reference recording to evaluate which microphone you should buy for podcast recording, including a pop plosives and the SSA sibilance test. You are listening to a Shure MV7 with the gain set at 20 decibels. This is a reference recording to evaluate which microphone you should buy for podcast recording, including a pop plosives test and a sibilance test. My verdict is definitely not an SM7. It's nowhere near as controlled in sound. There's more resonant low frequencies. In my opinion, it's more like an SM58 than it is an SM7. And then last of all, we've got a Telefunken M82. The body looks very similar to a Telefunken U47, but does it sound as good? We'll find out. You are listening to a Telefunken M82 with the gain set at 30 decibels. This is a reference recording to evaluate which microphone you should buy for podcast recording, including a pop plosives and a SSA sibilance test. You are listening to a Telefunken M82 with the gain set at 25 decibels. This is a reference recording to evaluate which microphone you should buy for podcast recording, including a pop plosives test and a sibilance test. Nope. Just nope. So, there you have it. What are your thoughts? Which are your favourites? Which performed the worst? Please leave your answers in the comments below and let's have a chat about them. But obviously, sound is subjective, so my clear winners might be far from yours. But what I want to quickly address before we wrap up is, like, where some of these mics kind of fall short, technically. Now, you'll notice I used a plosive shield on some of the mics, most of the ones that didn't actually come with one. So, for instance, the Ethos comes with its own... Uh, plosive shield and the MV7 comes with its own plosive shield so does the SM7 but all the rest pretty much didn't come with one I think it's a really important thing that you use a plosive shield like I'm using one right now over the top of this SM58 I did some testing without a pop shield and my clear losers of the shootout almost perfectly correspond with how badly these react to plosives so it's worth checking it out have a quick listen you are listening to a Telefunken M82 with the gain level set to 20 decibels. This is a reference recording for you to evaluate which microphone to buy, including a p p p plosive test. You are listening to a the gain level set to 20 decibels. This is a reference recording for you to evaluate, including a p p p. You are listening to a Rode Procaster with the gain level set to 25 decibels. 
including a p p p plosive test and a s. As you can hear, some are super sensitive, non-controlled, and unable to cope with high sound pressure levels. Some get super crunchy and distorted when they bottom out. Some just completely blow out, even on non-plosive words, which is a strange one. What's point using one of these microphones on vocals if it's just going to blow out on every word? Whereas all my favorite choices still manage to maintain a smooth and controlled sound. So let's get into the results. First, we'll go with budget, since ultimately that's going to be your main decider of which microphone you're going to buy here. Uh, it's amazing how good this piece of crap still holds up. The SM58, you can get them for under $100. And I've had this for such a long time, it's been bashed around so much, and it still works. It's still great for under $100. Also, the SE Dynacaster, SM58, and MV7 all have a very similar sound to it. Not perfect, but well-rounded and controlled and clear enough. No fuss, they just work. So if you're on a tight budget, maybe consider one of those three. The Earthworks Ethos is obviously the most expensive, but apart from its absolute classy looks, is it worth double the price of an SM7? It's a great mic, but I'm not sure about that. Next up, worst mics. Put them in the toilet. For me, it's the Heil and the Telefunken. Ah, to be honest, they sound absolutely horrific, and I'm so glad for Foreman's amazing return policy that I get to send them back, and I can't wait to send them back. I've heard they're pretty good on snare drums and kick drums, but that's not what this video's about, so they're gonna go back. And the road sounds pretty damn cheap and gritty and lifeless, and whenever it does get hit with a plosive or some high sound pressure, it just distorts the capsule really easily. It's an absolute bag of What's the biggest surprises? For me, the Neumann sounds processed already. I can't imagine having to do much EQ with it. Just like their condensers, it has like all the clarity in the top end more than other mics. And the bass is very controlled. I can imagine like not having to EQ out those low rumbles and the re low end resonances. It sounds pretty flat and as it would be processed. Although there's one issue with it, it can't handle plosives too well. So you might want to make sure that you've got a pop shield or you're a little bit more of a distance away, or your voice is projecting over the mic rather than directly into the mic. But apart from that, it sounds pretty nice. I was also surprised by how warm and maybe a little too dark my 441 is. Maybe it's broken. Who knows? And I was also expecting the ethos to be a lot brighter than it was. So, the moment that you've been waiting for, my top three. Number three. I think this is a hard choice. I think it depends on what type of voice you're recording. For a thinned out female voice that needs smoothing out a little, I would go with the Ethos, if you can afford it. It does sound as expensive as it looks, but maybe a little too dark for a deep male voice. In that case, I'd maybe choose a Neumann for the contrast to bringing the brightness of that deep low voice. For the Neumann, you're going to have to make sure that you've got a pop shield because it doesn't really take too well to plosives. And I keep coming back to this 509. It really is one of my favorite microphones and it could quite easily bump into third position. It's just that they're incredibly rare and you'll probably not find one. And the new Sennheiser 609s and 906s don't even come close to sounding like what this thing does. Ah, it's an amazing mic, but it's just as rare as rocking our shit. Number two. So, it has to be the SM7. It's controlled, it's smooth, it handles plosives and sibilance really well. It's not overly sensitive. In fact, it's the least sensitive mic out of the entire collection. We had to really crank up the gain to actually get a good level out of it. So, make sure that you use a good gain booster preamp like a cloud lifter to get a little bit more level out of the microphone. But it always sounds good and you can see why it's so popular. My one issue with it is it has this resonant frequency that's kind of in a place where I'd normally EQ it out in post, but it's like a little bit of a 3K whistle. So in that case, I have to give the number one position to da -da 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 -da, the RE20. There's something so classy about the sound of an RE20 for dialogue vocals. It's unbeatable in my opinion. It represents most naturally the frequencies of the person that's speaking into it. Maybe it's like the mid forwardness that I prefer. Well, it's not mushy in the low mids or harsh in the high mids, but it just has a mid-range pop that I can't quite put my finger on. It always sounds completely neutral. It's definitely not a mic that sounds flattering. Maybe if you want your voice to be more plush and posh, go for an SM7. It might sound a little bit more flattering. But I'd say this has to be my number one choice because it's the truest representation of your voice. It's cleanly delivered and little fuss in post-production. You hardly have to do any processing on one if you care about sound and you're taking podcasting seriously. Get yourself an RE20. If you like this, please share it with a podcasting friend. 
Maybe we can help them out with their podcast. I've been Jason Sanderson from podcasttech.com. What's been your podcasting issues this week, apart from choosing microphones?